G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at Autopilot. This is going to be the first in what's probably going to be two, maybe even three videos on Autopilot. This first one is just a bit of a look at how the Autopilot functions. And then in the following videos, we'll have a look at more specific things like trying to get it to dock and some of the problems that you're likely to run into with the autopilot and how you might get around them or avoid them in the first place. What we're going to do first is build ourselves a little ship. Start with our landing gear, add in our battery, and then we're going to add our thrusters. Normally, for an atmospheric based ship, I'll have up thrust and then I'll have thrust in forwards, backwards. Let's add a grid there and there. Left and right. And that's it. I'd be happy with that. I can fly with that. Trouble is, the autopilot doesn't really understand how to fly like that. So we need to give it a downward thruster as well. It doesn't like going down using just gravity. So you need to give it a thruster to be able to do that. Next up, if we're going to have an autopilot, we need the thing that's going to actually make the autopilot function. And that's going to be our remote control block. For the ease of using this thing, let's add an antenna so we can connect with it. And then we're pretty much good to go, except for that thing I always forget, which is a gyroscope. So let's pop a gyroscope in the middle there. And now we actually are good to go. Let's have a closer look at our remote control block. We've got our small grid there. Let's enter our terminal and jump down to our remote control. What we've got here is an option that's currently grayed out for autopilot. We can't turn it on or off. And there's a good reason for that. The autopilot doesn't have anywhere to go yet. To tell it where to go, you come down to your waypoints. Your waypoints will be GPS markers that you set up beforehand. What I've got here is a list of seven waypoints. And we're going to add the first six. Add waypoint one, two, three, four, five, and six. These run in a loop. And you can tell this autopilot how to proceed through that loop by checking your flight mode. Patrol will tell it to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then it'll go back to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Circle will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and just keep doing that. And then one way, we'll just do it once. Once it reaches waypoint 6, it will turn off the autopilot. Let's set this to circle to begin with. Our forward direction is relative to our remote control block. As you can see here, we've got our light on the front, which is our front of the remote control block. That means if I put my engineer this way, we're pointing in the same direction. So this will be forward. For the purposes of this craft, it doesn't really matter which way is forward or backwards. So we'll just leave that as it is. Now that we've got waypoints in our list, you'll see that the autopilot option is no longer greyed out. So we can turn it on. And you'll see that our remote control is now set to go to its current waypoint, which is waypoint one, and it's got its coordinates there. It's not doing anything because our landing gear is still locked, so we'd need to unlock it. We unlock our landing gear, our ship should turn around and take off. but it's doing something very, very strange. This crazy spinning top of a ship is one of a few problems you can run into when using the autopilot. There are a number of bugs in it that are sort of reproducible and some that are less reproducible. This one seems to happen whenever you've got a landing gear connected that you disconnect once you've already enacted the autopilot. Having high speed doesn't help as well, so we'll make a change to that one 
2. The easy way to fix this is to do the usual tech support first tip, which is have you turned it on and off again? So we'll do that and... And now everything's working. I've found that when your speed is set to the maximum, I experience more problems with the autopilot than setting it lower. That one there I don't think was related to speed, but we'll keep it lower. We can give it a bit higher than we have at the moment though. And that'll help us get to the next demonstration that I want to show you. So let's set our speed up to, I think we can get away with 80. The way I've got these waypoints set up is waypoint one starts here, two heads down this canyon, three is even further down this canyon, and then unlike waypoints one to two, then two to three, between three and four, is a big cliff face. And the autopilot's not going to do so well at dealing with that. When you're setting up your autopilot route, it's generally advisable to try and avoid any obstacles between the waypoints. The autopilot feature does have some capacity for avoiding collisions, but it's it's a bit rudimentary. So while your ship may not be damaged, it may also get trapped. So now that we've seen the course that it's got to take, which is over that hill we just went over, let's find out where our little ship is. Ah, I think we can see it now. Coming towards us, shooting towards us. Is it going to avoid me? Is it going to avoid me? Ow, no, it's not. It's going to smack into me at 80 meters a second. And that's where we'll look at the next function. Let's jump into our terminal. Let's slow this thing down. Because it was about to head at 80 meters a second into the cliffside. What we've got here is another option of collision avoidance. So let's crank our speed limit up and see what happens. Well, it hit hard enough to destroy something. Not, oh, it destroyed its antenna. That means I can't connect to it anymore. Let's try this with collision avoidance on. What we're going to do is we're going to pop an antenna wherever I can on this thing. Connect to it. Turn collision avoidance on. Leave everything exactly the same. Copy it. And let's set this one back and see what happens. Now remember, it's heading towards waypoint four, which to it is through that cliff face. We drop our ship in. It writes itself. It's going to go in. The other one managed to destroy its antenna on the front. Is this going to hit the ground? No. See, it actually slowed itself down. So the collision avoidance will stop most crash. Oh most crashes from happening, but certainly not all of them. If we want the ship to be able to get over this cliff, we're going to have to use that waypoint 3.5. The way we can do that is again, jump in to access this ship, up down to our remote control block. Let's add in waypoint 3.5 and you can see it's out of order. Currently, the ship's trying to get to waypoint 4. So we're going to need to move this up the list. And then... Something that I think should work this way, but doesn't seem to. We should be able to set this to go back to waypoint 3, not waypoint 4. And we should be able to do that by clicking reset waypoint. But it doesn't seem to work. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this ship. Come back here. Come back here. Let's cut you out. Let's get in visual range of waypoint one. So we can see waypoint one now. We'll paste the ship in. We'll jump in to control it. We'll turn off the autopilot. And you can see it was heading towards waypoint 4, and now we'll turn it on again. It'll go back to waypoint 1, 
It'll disconnect us from the terminal because we're more than 200 meters away, which is my current antenna range since I'm just in my suit. And then we'll see if this will be able to make it over the cliff with the addition of that extra waypoint. So let's go wait down here for it to make it back to us. We might even get to watch some entertaining cliff bumping that's happening with the other ship that still doesn't have the waypoint. Maybe it'll even make it there first. Oh, it's still trying. Is it wedged? It might be wedged. Looks pretty wedged. Oh, no. Let's see if it does any better if we turn collision avoidance on. So it takes a little bit of extra time. Something you notice I did there, if I try and take control, a whole lot of nothing happens. Because the autopilot's on, I cannot take control. I would have to go into the terminal, select remote control, turn off autopilot, then take control. Collision avoidance is on now. Oh, it's still struggling. And there you go. Saw something else I wanted to demonstrate. If you watch this ship, while it's trying to move around, particularly using the collision avoidance, it does tend to tip itself. So if you're going to use autopilot, you probably want to allow it to have thrusters that will lift it in most directions, because it's not going to keep itself oriented to gravity the way a real pilot would. Oh, it's almost made it over. And we can see the other ship zooming in. We've got its antenna in range now. The one that's been bumping its way over the cliff is making progress. It's not quick progress, but it has made progress. The pathfinding does leave something to be desired, but it looks like it might actually make it to that point, and it, if it gets lucky, it'll make it there before the other one. Both of these ships have collision avoidance on. The new ships made it there, and the original one has made it down to waypoint four. So you can see that even without the extra waypoint, it will eventually make it there. And with collision avoidance, it'll mostly make it there intact. But the collision avoidance isn't perfect. What I want to take a look at next is something I described earlier, which is the difference between circle, patrol and one way modes. So we'll set one of these ships up so that it's got patrol and the other one on circle. One way we'll leave out of it because it'll just stop. And we'll see whether they follow the pattern that I described earlier. When they get to waypoint six, we should see a bit of a difference in the way the two of them work. Let's see how well they do at getting to waypoint six without destroying themselves. They both got collision avoidance on and there's a cliff face in the way. And now we watch the dance of the bouncing autopilots. Here we go. Off they go to waypoint six. What we should see is the one in the lead should continue on to waypoint one, and the one closest to us should turn around and head back the way it came. So let's run ahead and make sure that the one in the lead does go the way we expect. And yep, off it's heading towards waypoint one. Now our second ship, what's it going to do? Pulls in, comes to a stop, turns itself around, and heads on back home. So it's going to go the long way around. I've got a bit of a strange contraption set up here. We've got our center of mass probably over near that battery, and we've got our remote control block set way out on a limb. The reason I've done that is to illustrate that the remote control block is the point that the autopilot tries to get onto the waypoint that it's heading towards. And you can see there that it did exactly that. It put the remote control block over that waypoint. What I've got here is on the left, we've got precision mode off, and on the right, we've got precision mode on. When we switched to this split view, they were both the same distance 
from the marker, so this will illustrate the difference between the two modes. The ship on the left has precision mode off, and so it's going to move a lot faster and not worry about being so precisely on its waypoint. Whereas the one on the right is going to slow down well and truly ahead of reaching the mark. And as you can see, it took it quite a bit longer to get to that waypoint. Having looked at all of that, I think it's time to do something maybe just a little more complicated with the autopilot. Let's paste this in and hopefully I can get control of it quickly enough. Terminal, remote control, off. Okay. What I want to do with this one is I want to give it an action to do at a waypoint. And the way we're going to do that is let's make this one stand out with its antenna because it'll be antenna 3. Let's drop off our landing gear and we'll use a merge block to make it do something that's really obvious when it reaches its waypoint to make sure that everything is working as intended. Grab our battery. Let's get a timer. Pop our timer on. Pop our parachute on. And then what we're going to do is set up a little bit of a chain of actions to happen as soon as we get to the first waypoint. We go to our remote control block. And we find waypoint 2. We'll set up for waypoint 2 rather than 1 just so that we make sure that everything's that it's following its course. And let's set up our actions. Much like the timer and other blocks, you can set up actions here. So we want this to trigger the timer block and we also want it to turn one of these merge blocks off so that this part will disconnect from the ship. Next up, we want to set the timer block, set up its actions, so that it's going to make this parachute open. And we want it to do that three seconds after, let's make it two seconds, after these merge blocks have disconnected. So with our remote control, we've got these actions set up, going to start the timer block and it's going to disconnect the merge block. Two seconds after that the timer block should trigger the parachute to drop. Let's see if this works. Our remote control's ready. Let's make it go a little bit slower. Let's turn it on. It's going to head off to waypoint one. Once it reaches waypoint one should turn to head to waypoint 2. Let's see if things work as I intended or if this is going to behave as it has a tendency to which is misbehaving. We've got our other ship heading back to base, the one that was on its patrol route and we're closing in. Is this going to work or am I going to be a failure? There we go, merge blocks disconnected, timer blocks going, parachutes open. The ship's going to continue on its route. And every time it gets to that point, it's going to try and do the same thing, even though the merge block's not there. That brings us to the end of part one of the autopilot's tutorials. These are going to be a multi-part tutorial series because there are lots of complicated functions that I'd like to try to make the autopilot do. And the first one I want to do is docking. The other part is I'd also like to do a video on some of the common problems you run into with autopilots. And yes, some of those will be bug related and might get fixed, but it'd be nice for us to put together a group of the problems that people do run into so that we can come up with some ideas of how to get out of it. And I know there are some people who've watched my videos who are much better at autopilot than I am. Matt Gaban, I'm looking at you as you were the one who taught me how to do docking within an atmospheric space with autopilot. And that's going to be very helpful in the next tutorial. So if you've got any tips 
any tricks, any ideas you want to explore with autopilot, let me know because I will do my very best to include them in the future tutorials. My plan at this stage is for the next tutorial to come in about two weeks. And if there's enough, we'll have a third one two weeks after that. In between, we'll get the usual tutorials and other videos that I'm always planning on making. And as I say that, I realize there is plenty more to come. So I'll see you then.